the thing was, and I didn't realize it till later, but I was reading one day, and whenever Jesus uh, healed the little girl or brought her back from the dead, the first thing he told his, her parents to do was to feed her. Now, I didn't know about it, but I was telling this testimony one time, and there was a lady there that was a, um, she had something to do with the medical profession. She came to me during the break right afterwards, and she said, do you know why you gave her the bread? And I said, not really. I mean, she said she was hungry, but I don't know. And she said, well, it's a thing that happens that whenever some, when somebody is either dying or has died or come back, she said, generally what happens is if you give somebody something to eat, then that automatically causes saliva, which causes the digestive system to kick in, which starts all of the body functions functioning. And, they, and this is something I've noticed now. When people come back from the dead and they give them something to eat, they usually stay. If they don't give them something to eat pretty quick, they usually leave again. They usually die again. Because th what it is is that their spirit is looking to see if the organs are actually functional to work. And if they're not, they won't get jump started. And so the spirit just leaves. The, the spirit of the person just leaves again. Now, so... But now we've seen this. I saw another uh, situation the same way uh, with a man that was beside the road, <clears throat> had died of a heart attack, and I was able to be there, um, <clears throat> and we ministered to him, and he came back, but then also I gave him a piece of bread. I had <clears throat> As I would travel, even to this day, if I travel, I've got usually a couple of things in my car with me. I usually have an uh, ice chest with some Cokes in it. Um, <clears throat> I also usually have... Um, a loaf of bread, and usually a pack of uh, microwave bacon. <laughs> I stay in a lot of hotels. Mo well, actually, motels. I don't stay in a lot of hotels. I stay in mo if I'm traveling and I'm paying for it, it's a motel. Um, if somebody else puts me up in a hotel, that's what they want to do. That's great. But if it's me, you know, it's usually Motel 6 or something like that. <laughs> and, um, but I try to find one that has a microwave, and so I carry the bread and the bacon just so I can eat something late at night without having to go out or get up in the morning and grab one and go. Anyway, so, there you go. Um, <laughs> now, I had the, the bread in the car with me that time and this man had died and we I ministered to him. I, all I said was the same thing I said over Rebecca. In the name of Jesus, you will live and not die. Uh, what had happened, I'm trying to make this quick, he was going down the road, apparently had a heart attack, went off the road in the middle between, and they had the big grass area in between. This was just before you cross into Tennessee out of Arkansas uh, on the highway, was it 30? 30? Yeah, 30 going across. Uh, 30? Yeah, I think it's 30. Or is it 40? 30. It's 30, yeah. 40? 40 or 30? Nobody cares. Anyway, okay. <laughs> it's a highway. Who cares? It's one of those two. Yeah, it's going into Memphis. Going to Memphis. 40. 40. Okay, yeah. You go, 30 goes up and then 40 cuts across. Okay. We got that settled. Now we know where the highways are. So, okay. But this guy was driving and he went off the road and the truck turned over and kind of slid. And then whenever everybody saw it, uh, they pulled him out of the truck, and it was snowing. It was just before Christmas. And so it was snowing, and uh, they pulled him out. He was lying there. He was dead. And so then I come on this scene, and the, the police hadn't got there yet. The ambulance hadn't got there yet. And so I'm pulling up. I was talking to my wife on the phone, and I said, I need to go. There's been an accident. I'm going to see if I can help. And so I pulled off and walked over, and there was a guy standing there. And I said, what's going on? And the guy said, this, this man's had a heart attack. And I said, okay. And he said, uh, I said, is he, is he okay? No, he's dead. I said, okay, can I see the body? And the man looked at me like, hey, you're weird, you know. <laughs> and he said, well, yeah, I guess. It's, he's right over here. So we walked around the truck, and I walked over. And this man's lying on the grass, had a blue windbreaker uh, pulled from his waist up over his head. And I went over to him. There's snow on the ground. So when I went over to him, I knelt down beside him, and I pulled the windbreaker off. And as soon as I saw him, now notice this, as soon as I saw him, I got so mad, and all I could think was, there is no way the devil is going to steal this man from his wife and his two daughters. Now, I didn't know anything about him. How did I know he had a wife and two daughters? Well, God was giving me that compassion because compassion is what strengthens faith and causes you to act. And so I put my hands on his chest. I said, in the name of Jesus, you will live and not die. I said it three or four times, and then took my hands off. Nothing happened. I got up, turned to walk off, and as I got about probably, I don't know, 10 feet away from him, because there was about 12, 15 people gathered up there. They were all standing back a good little ways. 
<clears throat> and as soon as I stood up and walked off, all of a sudden I heard this behind me sound like a belch. And, and I, you know, you think, okay, that's weird. And I turned around to look, and this guy had been lying in the snow, but he raised his head up, his eyes started open, and he starts raising his head up. And, and so I turned to go back to him, and the, all the people there, <laughs> I mean, I'm not kidding, they took off. I mean, every, you'd think they would run to help him. Everybody ran, right? And there was one guy that ran around the back of the guy's truck and was looking around the corner going, oh, Lord Jesus, oh, Lord Jesus. <laughs> you know? And it, and it was so surreal because I'm standing there and these people are running, this guy's saying that. I look back, this guy's raising his head up, and this guy's yelling, oh, Lord Jesus, oh, Lord Jesus. And I'm thinking, well, at least he knew who did it. You know? He wasn't back there yelling, oh, Buddha. Right? And so about that time, the police came up on one side, the ambulance came up on the other side, and they come in and they started saying, okay, everybody needs to go. But I had walked back to my truck and I went and got a piece of that. The, the, it was just a loaf of bread, you know, just loaf of bread, sliced bread. Went and got a piece out, <coughs> walked back over it, gave it to the guy. Everybody's coming around. And now the police are saying, what are you doing here? You need to leave. What are you doing? Run everybody off. And there was a woman there. And she said, because uh, I told her, I said, you know, does anybody know who this guy is? And she said, no, but I'm going to the hospital. I'm going to follow him. I'm going to follow him to the hospital. I said, well, I've got to, I've got to get uh, back to the East Coast. And I said, so I need to go because the weather was getting pretty rough and with snow and all that stuff. And I, she said, well, I'm going to go to the hospital. I gave her my number. I said, well, listen, when you find out anything about him, give me a call. Let me know what's going on. She said, okay, she'll do it. She went back to the hospital. When she got there, about two, it was about two days later, she actually called me. And she said, I want to give you an update on this guy. First off, the man that because she, she came to me first and said, I saw what you did. I saw what you did. And I'm like, okay. And she, she, said, and she was a believer. And so she said, uh, when she called me, she said, the man that you raised up, she said, uh, first off, uh, he was a Jehovah's Witness. Oh. And she said, now, when I first got there and started talking to him, because I told him that I was with him at the accident, and they let me talk to him. When I, well, she said, uh, when I first got there, he was admitting. He knew he'd been raised from the dead. He knew that the name of Jesus was what raised him up. And so she said, but then uh, his elders showed up from the kingdom hall. And they told him, if you keep saying this, we will kick you out. And so now he's not talking to anybody or telling anybody anything about it. But she had all the, all the information on it. So, and then, you know, jokingly, um, I, I said, well, no wonder it was so easy to raise him up. He's your witness. You know, they don't believe in hell. He had nowhere else to go. So anyway, <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Okay. <laughs>